Keith here with another video about R and in this one I'm going to look at calculating some summary statistics that is some descriptive statistics that tell us some basic things about the data and we'll also have a look at some useful plots to draw in R. Now before starting it's a good idea to set the directory where you want the files to be or rather point R and our studio at that directory. So that's under session. Set the working directory either to the source file location which is where this file is or to the files point location which is where this is down here. So I can browse using through this and set the or I can choose the directory directly which is my preferred option. So uh, on the USB stick here, which is the J, um, in uh, this folder and summary stats folder. Okay, second point, I am running off a USB stick here. If you're running off a hard drive on your desktop computer or laptop, that's fine. And it's simpler to install and run R on a hard drive on a laptop or desktop. You've got to do a little bit more fiddling around to run it off a USB stick, but doing that allows me to take it over to the lecture theatre or actually the PC lab and plug it in and everything will run. Now you can see here that RStudio actually created and ran an R command which is set working directory to that location. The other thing I need to do is up here and ensure that the drive letter here corresponds to where I want R and R Studio to save any packages. And I've again set that to the USB so that packages get installed on the USB and they're available. So I'm going to press the button here to run to run that command down there. Now, let's look a little bit more at what's going on here with the R script. Uh, an R script is just a set of commands telling R what to do. And the advantage of this is you can test and refine code, and then when you're happy with it, you've got it saved and you can readily reuse it when you need to. Now, R Studio puts certain kinds of text in colours. So any line that starts with a hash symbol here is marked as a comment and it doesn't get executed. So it's good practice to use a fair amount of comment text in the file so that when you're coming back you know what it's doing. And I'll actually correct the grammar there. So for this particular script, I need two packages, uh, psych and LSR. Uh, they're called libraries. So if I do that, um, I am getting some warning messages down here telling me that these packages were built under an earlier version of R that's okay, they'll still work. And LSR is actually learning statistics with R and that package was written by the author of that book. Um, panelutils.r here is a set of code written by the authors of Numerical Ecology with R um, which does some useful graph things. Um, and that code is available from their website. Um, so I'm going to run that. Now, up here on environment, you see these three functions here have appeared, and those are three functions that are written in that panel utilities.r script. Um, 
I I don't use all three. Uh, actually, it may uh, perhaps I do use all three. I'm not sure. Um, some of the code in here is taken from the code written by Numerical Ecology with R, and in fact, through this series of videos, a fair amount of the code is. Now you'll note I have functions, I have no data files, so I need to get those in. And I'm going to look at the structure of those data files separately. Um, so you may want to watch that video because it is important for this script, these descriptive stats and plots here. It's important that your files, if you're going to use this, your files are set up exactly the same as my files because I'm using certain information from the file especially for some of the descriptive stats. Now you don't have to have the same samples or the same number of rows it's just the columns and variables that are critical. So SPE is the species so we'll run that line and you'll see that it has loaded now, um, putting row.names equals 1 here tells R that the first column of information in the file is the names of the rows. And the other part here, read.csv, reads a comma separated value file. More on that in the other video. We can just click here. R gets sent the command view SPE and we can see it. So you can see the first column is the row names and then it's the um, categorical or labeling variables followed by all of the species, uh, species with the abundance for each. So let's keep going. ENV loads the environmental data and SPE loads the spatial data and what that means is it's just pressed on the same one. So here's SPA um, same row names, same coding or categorical variables, and then we've just got X and Y for the X and Y coordinates. Okay, now, in the, the simulation, depths are created as negative values because they're down below sea level, and the simulation is a general purpose one, which allows me to create environments that are above sea level. But for purposes of analyses, it's actually better and easier to interpret results if they are positive. So all I need to do is E and V dollars depth is equal to minus one times E and V dollars depth. Now E and V dollars depth, E and V is the name of that particular set of data, data frame. Minus one times tells it me to tells R to go minus one times a particular variable. So the dollar sign here tells R to get the depth variable from E and V and work with that. So if we go over to E and V now, we see that the depths are now all positive. Okay, let's keep going. Now describe is a function that's available in the psych passage and it does this. So first of all, I've got described ENV, and you can see there's the four variables. It's telling me how many replicates I've got, or how many rows, samples. Then I've got mean, standard deviation, median, trimmed mean, which excludes the more extreme values, um, MAD, minimum absolute deviation. So that's the difference sorry, median absolute deviation, that's the difference between the value and the mean. Minimum, maximum, range, skewness and kurtosis. Skewness measures the skew of the distribution to one side and kurtosis is how peaked or flat it is. Now the main things we'll be looking at here will be the mean and also we'll need to pay some attention at times to variances. Um, and then because I'm working with a small screen here. Um, the standard error if the last column is wrapped around into the next set of rows there. 
Now this is for the data file as a whole. As you saw, I actually have different sampling sites here. I've got um, control and impact, site 1, 2 and 3. For more information, go to the video where I look at the structure of the data file. So it would be useful to get some information about the different groups. And that's what the next line here does. It's this by, I'll come back to that, the data that it's going to use is ENV columns 4 to 7. So by having a comma, I'm saying telling R use all the rows, but just comma through from 4 to 7. Um, indices, it's going to use the values in columns 1 and 2 to create subgroups and then the function that it's going to use is described. So the by command here is a way of ex executing a function by different groups. So let's run that one. And now we'll make the console down here a bit bigger. So you can see status, control, impact, um, control, impact, that's site 3, and we go up here and we've got site 1 up there. And it just happens that for site 2 and 3, um, R is able to fit the whole thing on one line. So now we're breaking down the set of data into sets which have five replicates for each of the individual sites. And so if we look at hydrocarbon here, it's site 3 for the impact, mean is 10.8, at the control 3.04. Uh, site 2, 16.36, 3.00. So now we can start to get a better idea of what's happening. Now I can do this for now nothing. Uh, nothing seems to happen there. Oh, okay. I just think I just ran the same command again. Um, I can do this for species. So there's summary statistics for all species. Now again, I'm specifying which columns to use, 4 to 53, that corresponds to all the species. And then I can do the by command. And there's impact site 3 and summary statistics for all the species. Now, in general, we're probably not going to be interested in all of this information, but by calculating these out it does give us a bit of a feel for what sort of values, what sort of range of observations we're seeing. Okay, now in the file here the green text is, as you can see it, from Learning Statistics with R, and there's the link if you want to get it. Now some plots. You can see that uh, over here, our studio switched to the plots the pane and drawn a plot of the sample location. So I've got uh, sample lo samples immediately south of the north platform, platform here and the platform here, and then off to the side as controls. Now a couple of uh, plots. Now this one first is what, and this is code written by the Numerical Ecology with R people, um, what they've done is create a graph here showing the abundance classes. So the first bar up here is the number of times there was a zero in the file, and the answer is lots. And then these are the rest of the values. Now, 
because there's so many zeros, the rest of it's difficult to see, so it might be useful to run it without the zeros. Now, I didn't do the um, code up here, I won't do this for all the R files because it'll make the videos very long, but the first thing just says what's the range of abundances among the species. Uh, this command says create a table called AB of the species and the command down here says plot that table. Now this command is going to remove all of the zeros which is the first group and then plot that again. Now you can see for the actual species when we have counts. You can see that it's, it's a fairly skewed plot. There's lots down here with fairly low numbers and then middling numbers and then some that are fairly abundant. Well now it would be useful to get a handle on what's happening with the environment. So let's do some plots of environment. The PAR command here just sets uh, two columns, two rows in the graphing window. And the next command you see just draw box plots into each of those locations. So we've got a box plot depth, sediment, nutrients and hydrocarbons. And this is averaged across all of the sites, remember. So it's the same information we saw earlier. You can describe it graphically displayed. Um, and the plot command down here is long and complicated, but um, and in fact, I don't even know how to interpret all that, so I'm not going to bother. Um, over here <coughs> is where the data is coming from. This is so. This is where I specify the. Oh, sorry, the, the, the ones we ran are the ones up here, which are relatively easy to interpret as box plot. Uh, depth, sediment, nutrients, and hydrocarbons from E and V, and then this text here just sets the title, and that just sets the colour. Okay. Again. And what we've done there is drawn bubble plots for all of the variables, and in a nice little range of colours. So bubble plot is puts a point on, as you can see, it's kind of a map diagram, it's using the x and y coordinates to put the samples on, and the size of the dot is the size of the magnitude of that particular sample. So a very big dot is a sample with a lot of hydrocarbon, and a very small dot a sample with a little hydrocarbon. And then we've just got a few more plots here. Um, so this one is just plotting each of the variables against each other. So the depth here versus sediment particle size versus nutrients and versus hydrocarbon. So that's giving us a bit of an idea of what's going on. And then over here, adding in histograms showing the distribution of values and also adding in a, a smoother line here. This is not a line of best fit or anything, it's just a smoother than it runs through the main part where the samples are. And that's it. The advantage of having the script you can see is I don't have to remember what those commands are and I can fiddle around to get the results just the way I want them save the script and then rerun it. The advantage of running in R Studio here is that I can easily peruse the results. So I can scroll, enlarge this here and go and look at the results up there and I can um, save it and the graphs over here are saved and I can scroll backwards and forwards if I save this as a project, in fact I'm, I'm running a project called Summary Stat, uh, um, if I save this uh, it will overwrite 
the existing project. And the individual graphs here, I can save as an image, save as a PDF, or copy to the clipboard for copy and paste. Okay, that's the end of this introductory video. Before watching this, I strongly recommend watching the video about the structure of the files. And I've just noticed one other thing to point in, point out here. NAN is not a number. So that's when it's trying to calculate kurtosis. Uh, and for a variable such as crustacean 10, which has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of zero, in other words, it's entirely absent from the system, um, you can't calculate some of these things. Alright, that'll be it.